You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to Volatility Views, the premier program for volatility traders. Each week, we'll take a deep dive into the world of volatility with in-depth analysis, trading activity reviews, strategy breakdowns, cutting-edge education, and much more. We'll also bring you exclusive conversations with the traders, researchers, and asset managers who are reshaping the volatility landscape. If it involves volatility, then you'll find it on Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by Myax, one of the fastest, most efficient trading platforms in the world. Myax is proud to bring you Spikes Volatility Products. Spikes options and futures are traded on the Spikes Volatility Index, Spike, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction, all for ultra-low exchange fees. It's volatility reimagined. Learn more about spikes at myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options and futures involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for informational purposes only and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. Volatility Views is also brought to you by Matrix Executions, LLC, an agency broker-dealer focused on best execution in trading workflow automation. A technology-driven firm, Matrix is led by trading pioneers with decades of experience designing and building best-in-class solutions for options markets. Matrix connects to all domestic exchange venues and multiple international exchanges and serves both institutional and individual clients. For more information on Matrix Executions, LLC, please visit MatrixExecutions.com. And now... It's time to take a deep dive into the world of volatility. It's time for Volatility Views. All right, everybody. That music means it is Friday. It is noon central. It is 1 p.m. Eastern. It is time for Volatility Views, the premier program. For volatility traders, my name is Mark Longo from theoptionsinsider.com, as well as, of course, from the ever-compelling, ever-insightful, at least we hope so, Options Insider Radio Network. Remind you, if you like what you hear, vol views, anything else we do here on the network, multiple shows usually hitting you a day. Keep rating and reviewing. really does help the new folks who are discovering the world of options and, indeed, subsequently the world of volatility. Helps them find their way to this content. Of course, keep those questions and comments coming, too. We do love to hear from all of you out there and let's see who we're hearing from on the old volatility views program today i am pleased to be joined once again by the greasiest of meatballs the guy who's hanging out down there deep in the heart of texas none other mr mark sebastian from optionpit.com by way of all sorts of other robin hood you name it all sorts of other cool ventures going on over there these days mr meatball welcome back to volatility view sir hey it's good to be here what a day, huh? What a day. What a, what a last couple of days. <laughs> what a last couple of days indeed. So let's get to it. It is time for the volatility review. It's time to break down the latest developments in the volatility trading world. It's time for the volatility review. All right, everybody, welcome to the Volatility Review, the portion of the show we break down the week that was and indeed still is from a volatility trading and trending and analysis and unusual activity and all sorts 
of perspectives. And coming into our showtime here on Friday, we're seeing a whole heck of a lot of green on the screens today. Most of the major indices up firmly. We've got uh, S&P kind of playing the Goldilocks up about two-thirds of a percent, Dow up about half a percent, and we got NASDAQ leading the charge up nearly a full percent now, trying to get back some of the some of the blood that it has shed over the course of this past week. As Mark mentioned, it's kind of been a, a topsy-turvy, turbulent week. We saw Yellen spooking everybody earlier in the week. Some of the earnings didn't seem like they were going far enough to stem the bleeding, so we saw sell-offs, a ball spike Coming into the latter portion of the week, now we're seeing that worm starting to turn. Of course, coming into this morning, it seemed like the blood red might continue. We saw a pretty dismal jobs number. 266,000 jobs were added in April. That shows maybe this all this reopening talk maybe getting a little bit ahead of itself because Dow Jones have been expecting about a million new jobs. So 266,000 falls far short of that expectation. Unemployment also going up to 6.1%. They'd expected about 5.8%. So people thought that might take some of the bloom off the rose, but no, the market feeling its oats yet again today. Firmly green to end the week. That means our vol products taking a bit of a break here to end the week as well. Spikes coming into showtime had just crossed past 18 handle to the downside. It was about a 1790 down a little over a point from where it was this time last show, VIX Cash was at about a 17 and a quarter. When we kicked off the show, it puts it down a little over a point, about 1.3 points from last show. And VVIX down about to about 106, down about three points from last show. So, Mark, as you alluded to, a lot going on, a very topsy-turvy week, a lot of mixed narratives coming in at loggerheads throughout the week, which is what makes the market interesting, right? You got a lot of different things going on at the same time, a lot of different perspectives playing out what was lighting up your tape on this somewhat topsy-turvy week sir yeah if you'd have told me that we were going to miss the jobs report by seven hundred fifty thousand um to the downside and the s&p would rally 27 points uh i would have i would have laughed at you uh but this market is just uh, i guess that means rates stay low forever uh and yeah, so we're seeing all the indexes green. Um, vol is off. Um, there is pretty heavy uh, trading in puts today. Uh, I'm seeing some some fun action on the May 18s that expire on the 19th. And, you know, everything that I'm looking at says, uh, you know, Mark, you're wrong. And Vol's only going to go down. But, uh, you know... Who knows? <laughs> We're not in a market for rational analysis, sir. We got Dogecoin rallying to the moon. <laughs> We've got rational analysis it lost its grip. I'd say probably in the middle of 2020, sir. We're, we're fighting to get it back, but you're right. The dismal science of economics showing its luster or perhaps lack thereof yet again today. And it has absolutely no bearing <laughs> on the markets. It's got another day of more buyers and sellers. That's what it breaks down to at the end of the day. Let's get on out there to the futures portion of the space. You know, I've said it many times. It seems like the answers to all of our volatility questions are lurking somewhere out there on that VIX futures curve, that volatility surface. Let's see if we can find them out there together. Coming into showtime today, we had that May future trading about one, a little over one and a half, about 1.6 points premium to the cash. That's getting a little bit of its distance back to the cash that it had lost last week. It was about a point above the cash last week. Of course, that cash was whipping around last week because we saw a lot of craziness unfolding during our showtime. June, actually about three points. That actually is kind of unched, actually from where it was this time last. So it's just that front portion of that curve, that inflection point of the curve, really, that's changing a little bit. June, keeping its distance. Mark, you know, this this futures term structure has been an interesting one to watch. You've been saying for a while it's plateauing and has been plateauing around that October cycle. That still seems to be the case, plateauing around a 24 now. So obviously it's much lower than the 28 and change it was plateauing at not too long ago. But otherwise... It seems like that shape, particularly in the latter portion of the curve, is still there. Anything catching your eye out there from a volatility futures perspective this week, sir? Yeah, you know, the curve has really sloped down. Um, you, We're looking at a, you know, a, a, starting to get near the lows for May again. Um, and June is below 21. 
Uh, July is 22 and a half, but yeah, it's a steep, hard sloping futures curve. And, um, you know, they are, and yes, you're right. The back end of the curve, once you get to kind of September, it completely flattens up. There's it, it's, it's pretty amazing. The, the way that, you know, now every, it seems like every time we have one of these little mini shocks, they're willing to sell off more and more of this curve and, and, and steepen it. Uh, we're now have kind of four months of slope. Uh, instead of what had been one or two months of slope. So the curve is more and more normalizing. Um, but, you know, I, I'd like to see that VIX get, you know, 16 or sub 16 um, before I, I buy it. Because, you know, what's, what's interesting, Mark, is that since April expiration, which is now, what, three weeks ago, the S&P 500 is up 55 points. Uh, from from April expiration, and VIX is actually up over a, about a point over that same period of time, and you know three weeks and fifty points is not exactly a lot of volatility. But the if you look at the the tea leaves, you see that oh you know what no we're moving up and down and up and down. And it seems every time we get a little uh, a little bit of a sell off, the futures curve. Um, snaps. It is it is very whippy on that curve. Um, vol shorts have z- little to no tolerance for carrying, continue to carry a uh, short vol on in a ra- rising VIX market. Everyone seems to still be a little bit afraid of uh, taking on the chin uh, being short vol. That does seem to be the case. It's one of the things we've marked on. I know that's one of the things that's been coloring my crystal ball analysis every week is we do get these moments these shocks where you're right people are not at all not at all reticent about closing out their ball shorts and doing so very aggressively we saw that again earlier this week so it, it's getting that spike pun intended is getting these pops that you know volatility is known for that's kind of why people trade these things they like to get these pops but they're, they're getting very poppy to coin a phrase out there these days and then it comes off again pretty aggressively so these these moments of just extreme aggressive upside movement it does kind of color everything else we're doing here because of course who knows how much of that is going to come out by the time of our show time this week a lot of it has but still it's just a crazy time speaking of crazy times mark you know over the course of the past year you and i have been remarking one of the long-standing <laughs> conversations we've had pretty much ever since the death of xiv has been the subsequent slow death of by a thousand cuts, it seems like, of VIX futures. These numbers have been anemic. It seemed like nothing could really give VIX futures the shot in the arm that it needed. Not even the really the big annihilation, the big vol pop last year in March and the subsequent craziness that went on all throughout 2020. Not even that was really enough to boost VIX futures. And it seemed like we were waiting for the return of you know the XIV clones to really start juicing up those numbers again. But the numbers now, hot off the presses earlier this week from our friends at OCC, perhaps painting a different story. Let's start with options volume because, of course, options volume has been one of the big questions of the year. Can options volume persist? So far, the answer has been yes. Pretty much every month of this year has been a record. The first quarter was the most active quarter in the history of options. So, so far, the answer has been a resounding yes. Coming into April, Still a very active month, 715.6 million contracts. That's up 30% from a year ago. April 2020 was, of course, no slouch of a month. Also the highest April volume on record. So good numbers there, of course, below the numbers we saw back in March. March was 904 million contracts. Of course, a couple of things to process in that as well. Shorter month in April, not as many trading days due to just the way the month works out. Also the, the Easter holiday. So you're talking an ADB now, which is skyrocketing you're talking 40 million contracts a day is the adb so tack on a couple of more you're up to about 800 million probably so still not breaking march was still a very active month out there so good stuff to be seen a few surprising bright spots as well mark another interesting area we've kind of been remarking on is kind of the lack of index options volume that's been getting annihilated even throughout the height of the madness of the pandemic that was up last month 12.4% 12.4% to 37 points, about 37.2 million. But the interesting thing that caught my eye 
futures cleared volume at OCC. Remember, OCC pretty much mostly clears VIX futures over there. There's not many other futures contracts going up at OCC. Was 4.2 million contracts, nearly 60% increase from April of last year, Mark. This is the first time we've seen a year-over-year increase, and I can't remember how long, in VIX futures. So that kind of caught me by surprise. Does that surprise you as well? And B, what are your thoughts on what is driving this near-term resurgence here in VIX? Yeah, you know, I, I got to say I am surprised. Um, my guess is that the, that the new VXX is help, you know, since it reversed split, is helping a lot with future VIX futures volume. And uh, again, you do have some funds starting to step in and trade uh, short and long vol on some of these swings. And since April expiration, since we had the reverse split, uh, we have definitely seen uh, an increase in market volatility and VXX volume is way up, which, it, you know, because people are trying to set up shorts, it's, uh, it's. I'm surprised it's as big as it is, but I'm not surprised that month that we've seen a dramatic increase in volume. Yes, maybe we don't have to wait for the return of XIB2, whatever the heck they're going to call the new version, or maybe the VIX futures volume just got so anemic that it had nowhere to go but up. But either way, you know, the pandemic couldn't do it. All these other things couldn't do it. The election couldn't do it, but. April of 2021, that's what could possibly be the thing that finally turned around VIX Future. Again, it's only one month. We'll have to wait and see. But that's kind of been this every month. If you know last year, listeners, we were talking about more volume, more volume, more volume pretty much everywhere except for two dark spots. It was index options and it was the futures. Every month they were off 30%, 50% from the month before. So these two both turning around, kind of interesting. I'm sure folks at the SIBO are probably excited to hear those numbers because those two are very near and dear to them over there let's keep on rolling now out into the volatility options landscape let's kick things off in spikes land we were talking last week about a resurgence with some paper out there in spikes options it seems like some of these incentive programs everything else that my has been instituting on the future side starting to pay some dividends on the options side as well because we talked about a nice resurgence of paper we saw more of that going up in fact going up during our showtime last week let's break down the top five positions out here in spikes right now. Number five are the June 25 puts. Got about a thousand of those. And the rest of these are all 1,500. Lastly, June 50 calls, 1,500 of those. Number three, the May 28 calls, 1,500 of those. Number two, the 1,500 of the May 23s. And rounding out, the, just pretty much, you can pick these in any order you want. <laughs> Alphabetically, I guess, because they're all the same amount. 1,500 of the May 21 puts. By the way, those those latter portion got a little bit adjusted or, or during our last show we saw another thousand lot spread going up kind of a funky one mark it's just like paper bought 500 of the may 23 calls for a buck 50 and 500 of the may 21 puts for 295 all these went up at the same time listeners this is all one spread then they turned around and sold 500 of the may 28 calls for 60 cents so you got a 23 28 call spread going up with the i should say the 21 puts so that makes a modicum of sense you want to sell some upside but then on top of it they got this Funky May 40 call kicker. <laughs> 500 times they sold those for a nickel as well. That one has me scratching my head a little bit, just given what we know from the recent past of the volatility products, Mark. That that last 500 lot on the 40 strike, that could potentially come back to bite you. Yeah, I, I don't ever agree with selling a out-of-the-money call at a nickel. I just don't, I don't understand it. Out of 500 of those, how much? How much are you going to bring in on that? Like, like nothing. Um, the uh, the spread, though. Yeah, I mean, it makes a lot of sense. It's it's been in line with a lot of the paper that we've seen. Uh, yeah, I, I don't I don't quite get the uh, the the 500 lot for nickel unless they bought them. Maybe maybe somebody was willing to sell those to them. <laughs> I, I don't know, but that that's weird. Yeah, the vertical against the puts, I, I kind of see that, or in this case, with the puts, because they, they bought a bit of a strangle, it seems like, the May 23-21 strangle, and they paid about almost 450 for that. Then they sold the 28 calls, knocked 60 cents off of it. I get all that, but selling the 40 calls for another nickel, 
yeah, that's where yeah, I think you lose me out there. But interesting stuff. Nonetheless, you have seen a lot of interesting ratios and one by twos and other spreads. And certainly that one by two guy who was pretty active ahead of the pandemic last year in spikes. He certainly did all right. So interesting paper out there, but just a strange one <laughs> that came up right during our show last week. So we didn't really have a chance to sink our teeth into it last week let's sink our teeth into vix options now not a lot to sink our teeth into today Two hundred sixty-eight thousand, just north of a quarter million contracts on the tape right now that actually is looking pretty decent compared to this slowly eroding adb which is down to four hundred eighty-eight thousand. It's down another five thousand from our show last week so more than half of that on the tape right now so it's like maybe a day that they're probably going to beat that somewhat anemic ADB. Let's see if the OI is also anemic. Cost you 122000 to break into the top 10 in VIX right now. That gets you to the May 21 puts. Number 9, 128000 of the June 17 puts. Number, number 8, 132000 of the May 23 puts. A lot of puts here. There's only three calls, and they're all at the top. <laughs> number 7, 132000 as well of the May 20 puts. Number six, a buck fifty almost exactly of the May 17 puts. Number five, 156,000 of the May 16 puts. Number four, 165,000 of the June 15 puts. And then the top three, all calls. So you probably guessed the top two. They've been the same for a little while. Number three, 165,000 of the May 60s. And then the top two is still that July vertical here, the July 2540 vertical. Size pretty much unchanged, 253,000 of the 40s open, 263,000 of the 25s open. So that size July vertical, if you're wondering, it's still there, listeners. Still waiting and seeing for that 2540 vertical to pay off. Let's see what's lighting it up out there today. Like I said, kind of an anemic day, pretty much an anemic week from an overall VIX options perspective. Today's... Top five contracts out there. We've got number one, 36,000 of the May 60s. So back to the May 60s track everybody loves. Number two, we drop off quite a bit to 18,000 of the May 18 puts. Number three, 15,000 exactly of the D's. First D's we've seen in a while. The D's 13 puts. Interesting. I'll have to go dig up, see what those went up for. That's an interesting one. Number four, 14,000 of the May 42 halves. And round out the top five today, 13,500 of the June 22 calls. Heading on out to yesterday. Not much paper on the tape yesterday either. 306,000 contracts total, the most active contract. June 20 puts, 18,000 of those, followed by 16,000. October, gone to October. Ox 75s, 16,000 of those. Loving those slip in there every now and then. The 75s, the 80s, the pars, all these fun strikes sneaking in every now and then. Number three, 13,000 almost of the May 24 calls. Number four, about 12,000 of the July 17 puts. And round out the top five on a pretty weak day yesterday, 11,500 of the May. 22 calls. Buckle up, listeners, because it's getting even weaker on Wednesday. 226,000 contracts total going up in VIX. So we've already surpassed that today. The big contract on Wednesday, 21,000 of the May 20 puts, followed by about 20,000 of the May 17 puts. Looks like a little bit of a vertical going up there, followed by about 9,000 of the May 30 calls. 9,000 as well of the May 22 calls, so maybe a 2230 going up there as well. And rounding out the top five on Wednesday, 6,600 of the May 18 puts. Tuesday was pretty much the most active day of the week. 610,000 contracts on the tape. The most active contract, 33, almost 34,000 of the May 30s. 31,000 of the June 40s. 27,000 of the November 85 calls, followed by 25,000. Of the May 75s. Dear I say, are they rolling from the May to the Nov? <laughs> I'll have to dig into those as well. Those are interesting strikes to have back to back there on Tuesday. And 20,000 almost exactly of the July 37 halves. Monday, another anemic day. 272,000 contracts on the tape. The most active contract, the May 20s, 25,000 of those. Followed by about 13,000 of the May 27 calls. 10,000 of the May 47 halves. 9,500 of the May 21s and around out the top five on a pretty light Monday, 8,600 of the SEP 65 calls. Mark, kind of a weird week, a mostly light week, not a ton of volume, but punctuated within it there, some weird prints. 75s going up 16,000 times, May 75s going up 25,000 times, Nov 85s going up 27,000 times. And uh, we got SEP 65 is going up 9,000 times on Monday. So my question to you, sir, is A, which of these calls trades was you? Because I know you love these. And then B, any other prints catching your eye this week, sir? Yeah, I mean, all the all the way out of the money stuff has been interesting. We're seeing a lot of that trade. 
Um, you know, so far today they've they've done a a chunk of the sold a chunk of the May 60s and bought the May 45s, the May 42s, the May 32s, the May 22s, the June 32s. All those have traded more than 5,000 contracts, and then they've sold. Uh, you know, 21, 21,500 of the 60 calls at a nickel. Some other trading that we're seeing a big buyer of the December 13 puts for 19 cents, which I think is interesting. And a, as I said, the, uh, the, the most active contract right now that I'm, I'm seeing, uh, in May is the 18 puts that have about 18, oh, nope, the, those May 60s have traded 36,000 today. Outside of that, the, the only ones with any real value that are trading day are the May 18 puts that are 85, 90 cents. Uh, not a lot, not a lot of paper in June. We saw the 16 puts trade, uh, the June 22 calls and 32 and a half calls are traded, and uh, you know the July 20 puts have, have some paper on them as well. Uh, all in all, a relatively slow day as a whole. Uh, in a slow week, which just simply did not see a lot of of trading with this up and down movement. Um, we still have pretty decent open interest, so it, you know I guess people are just kind of pos- positioned already for what they want, and uh, and that's what's uh, driving things right now. Those D thirteen puts for nineteen cents. Those are. Those are intriguing to me. It looks like they went up as a spread. Looks like here, looks like uh, a trade alert has them as a a one by two ratio put spread with the D sixteen puts going up. It looks like a couple couple of times six hundred by two hundred times here. Obviously, they did more than that. Actually, got thirteen thousand total of these D thirteen puts going up just in one leg. But yeah, that's that's an interesting strike. D thirteen puts for nineteen cents. What do you think about that strike, listeners? Would you rather buy it? Or would you rather sell those puts for 19 cents? Hit us up. Let us know what you think as we keep on rolling into another product you folks love to love or perhaps love to hate. These days, it's feeling the latter right now. VXX down to about a 37.70 coming into this segment of the show. Down not quite two points, about 1.8 points from where it was last week. It seemed like VXX was just getting all of its juice squeezed out of it. Last week, we were threatening the 38 handle not too long ago. And then, of course, Yellen came in, spooked everybody earlier this week, and VXX got rocking and rolling to the upside, broke back through the 40 handle again, got up to around the 42 range, and then it seemed like, at least in the near term, the erosion was done, and now it's coming back off with a vengeance today, listeners. So a lot of this erosion we're seeing <laughs> is pretty much today, <laughs> after having been well north of these levels for much of the earlier portion of the week. Not translating into a ton of volume right now, though. Even though BXX has reverse split, people were thinking that was going to be the thing that really uh, jazzed up the volume. Maybe still some lingering symbology issues floating around out there. Because uh, either way, only 83,000 contracts on the tape today. The ADV is also down sub 200,000 now, 196,000. That's down another 34,000 from this time last year. This one was... Threatening 400K not too long ago, listeners. So the ADV and VXX is taking it on the chin. Be interesting to see once all this stuff gets sorted out if perhaps these volume numbers start coming back in. Let's break down the top 10 positions out here. Again, these are going back to (laughs) pre-split adjusted strikes that uh, I think you guys can maybe wrap your head around a little bit easier out here. Let's go 23,000 of the formerly May 11 puts. Remember, these all have been now uh, a little bit adjusted. Number nine, 23,000 of the SEP nine puts. Number eight, 24,000 of the June 20 calls. Number seven, 28,000 of the June nine puts. Number six, 31,000 of the June 11 calls. Number five, 31,000 as well of the May nine puts. Number four, 32, almost 33,000 of the May 11 calls. Number three, 33,000 of the SEP 10 calls. Numero dos, 39, almost 40,000 of the May 10 puts. And rounding out the top positions here in VXX, 51,000 of the May 12 calls. Remember, these are the VXX ones. So that's probably what's causing some of the issues with the symbology out there. For a while there, we still couldn't even find weeklies out there in VXX again. So I'm sure a lot of that is one of the reasons why we're seeing these lingering issues with the volume out here in terms of what's printing today what's active today like i said not a ton on the tape 
right now, the most active contract in VXX right now. We got the 38 puts going out today, 5,000 of those trading, followed by the June 28 puts, 4,000 of those, 2,000 of the May 38 halves, 2,000 as well of the May 37 half puts, and round out the top five today, about 2,000 of the May 37 puts. Mark, it's been a weird week for VXX. I know you guys were talking for a while about how you thought it seemed like there certainly was a lot of pent up erosion to come from that May future to be played out in VXX. Miss Yellen intervened in that a little bit earlier this week, sent VXX in the other direction. What have you and what have your crazies in the pitch chat been up to and keeping an eye on out there in VXX this week, sir? Yeah, you know, um, you're absolutely right. VXX has been pretty bouncy. It got to 42 and is back to below 38 in the course of a three-day span. Uh, just goes to show you how uh, sensitive vol futures are to what's going on. Um, yeah, you know, an interesting uh, trade today in VXX. Uh, so far, about uh, 4,400 of the 28 puts in June have been have been uh, traded. And we saw a, like you said, a big uh, single lot name buyer of the June 36 puts. They bought a thousand of them for two dollars and ninety three cents. Um, Mark, going back to your ratio, yeah, uh, on VIX itself, it was the VIX um, December th- uh, 1613 put one by three for um, they paid sixteen cents for that. So. A uh, pretty big bet on vol dropping, but maybe not going beyond twelve, which I don't think is a bad play for sixteen cents. One by um, three. That's an interesting ratio. Yeah, they they bought. Uh, looking at VIX, they bought. Uh, you know, they, so that nineteen cents was a sale. They sold ni- thirteen thousand seven hundred seventy six of them at nineteen cents, and then the D sixteen puts. That I saw are they bought four thousand five hundred ninety two of those, so maybe maybe uh, they paint eighty three, so um, about a one by three, you know, give her you no, know, that's that's absolutely a one by three. So that is the ratio that they put on. Now, how many times have we talked about? At least we used to talk about all the time the ratios to the upside, right? That was the trade du jour. In VIX, you very rarely saw anything else going up for size. It was always yeah. the one by two, the upside. We always speculated, why don't we see them to the downside? There were a lot of reasons why. Now, all of a sudden, we're seeing those, which is kind of it. And one by three. That's an aggressive ratio. Yeah, I, I, liked, I like that spread. I may uh, I may play around with that and see if I come up with something. Yeah, sec- second I saw that strike, uh, I, I didn't hate it. Let me just put it that way. It's it's an interesting idea, interesting strike. Like I said, we haven't seen a lot of Ds hitting the tape that much in VIX. So someone decided to... Go a little bit farther out, draw an interesting line in the sand down there this far and no farther to the downside out there. You like that spread anymore now, listeners? That is one by three. What are your thoughts on some ratios? Starting to see some of the strategies we saw applied to the upside all the time in VIX now starting to get applied to the downside. Interesting stuff afoot. Let's see if anything is interesting out there in UVXY. This product, again, kind of languishing. We have news of an impending Reverse split on this one. Uh, coming into today's show, not still there at 420. Coming into today's show, it's down about a third of a point from last show. So it's still kind of languishing around that $4 range. Uh, ADV, about 228000 That's kind of in line with what it was this time last week. Seems like they're going to beat it today. 192,000 contracts have already traded today. So we're seeing UVXY outpacing VXX right now by more than 2x. Let's see what the active trades are out there this week in UBXY. We got the May expiring next week, so the 14th four half calls going up about 19,000 times, followed by the May four half puts expiring today. About 19,000 of those as well. The numbers line up. That would be a weird roll if you're rolling the May four half puts from today to the four half calls for next week, but we've seen weirder things. Uh, 16,600 for number three of the May four calls expiring next week. And then we got 12,600 of the May four half puts also expiring next week and rounding out the top five here in UVXY, a surprisingly active UVXY day. 11,600 of the May five calls also expiring next week. Let's break down a top five here in UVXY. Number five, 22,000. These are the top open interest positions, by the way, listeners. So the biggest positions right now in UVXY. Number five, 22,000 of the June 10 calls. Number six is actually 20,000 of the June pars, the 100. So. There you go. 
<laughs> Not much chance for that by June, I'm afraid. Number four, 26,000 of the May 5 calls. Number three, 28,000 of the May 4 half puts. These are both expiring today, actually, May 7th. Number two, 54,000 of the June 5 calls. And rounding out the top UBXY positions, nearly 70,000, 69,000 and change of the May 4 halves that are going out today. So this UBXY OI is going to look a lot different this time next week. Unfortunately, those June pars still going to be there for whoever <laughs> put those bad boys on. Mark, I know you've kind of been waiting for UVXY to do its dance like VXX and reverse split back to some something more meaningful, more relevant than $4.20. But what are your thoughts on what's been going on out here in a surprisingly active UVXY week, sir? Yeah, you know, um, the last week, the big trade was a guy had rolled out of the April 30s into the May sevens or the, uh, and, uh, four and a half calls. Uh, they had a good opportunity to take some profits, uh, on Wednesday cause UBXY had a week. I gotta tell you it, it, it had a week. Um, the high on the week of UBXY was five, uh, you know, almost was five bucks. Uh, so those calls were a nice winner. Um, but we did not see a lot. Uh, we didn't see them unwind it. They were, must have been looking for that secondary pop. And here we are today, and they have not rolled it. They're not buying any more. Um, you know, we do have some some pretty active May 14s on the tape. They bought uh, 16,000 of the May 14 fours. The four and a halfs have traded almost 19,000, and the uh, uh, the fives have traded about twelve thousand. So you do have some activity uh, for next week's calls, but um, that one big kind of whale customer that uh, had a just a jackload of the four half calls uh, does not appear to be coming back. You know how many times have we said this? I and mean, this is important in any product where you're buying options premium. I mean, you have to act fairly quickly when it moves, but it seems like it's orders of magnitude more important in the vol products. I had this conversation with someone recently. They were asking me about you know how they should use VIX calls and should they use these as a hedge and all these other things. And I kind of explained to them you know how that can work and you do capture those explosive upside moments. But quite often, it's something like this where the, the upside movement you're getting is almost hilariously short-lived and you have to act within minutes to really maximize that opportunity. And for a lot of people out there who are doing other things, maybe you actually have a day job, you can't monitor your your VIX calls, or in this case, UVXY, minute by minute. It's hard to, to maximize all of that. So once again, Mark, we see a nice move. It pays off, but you have to take it off the table, at least some of it, within the span of a few minutes, sir, before it's gone. Yeah, that's that's right. When you, when you get a profit like that, you got to take some money off the table. All right. Uh, it, it's okay if you leave some on, but they did not pay a lot for those calls last week. And they, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking here and yeah, they, they did not pay a lot for those calls last week and they did not take any off, it appears, which is, is not never really a great idea. So what you're saying is I should probably... Right as we're speaking, liquidate some of my Dogecoin, sir, because that that may not be at sixty cents for a long time. Is that what you're telling me? You know, I was having a conversation with uh, a kid about that yesterday, and you know, he's in for oh, what what is he in for? He's in for like uh, two and a half cents, and it's, he spent ninety dollars, and it's worth two thousand dollars. And he's like, yeah, I'm just going to hold it and see where it goes. I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> all right, let's have a discussion here. I, and then what I said to him, and, and this is important, I said, what if you had spent $90,000 and it was now $2 million? Would you take some money off the table? And he said, yeah. I go, build those habits now. So take some money off the table. I don't care if it's 500 bucks or 1000 bucks. I don't care what, but you have to take some money off the table. So at a minimum, I would have liked to seen this guy or girl, uh, you know, take off their cost in those calls so that, you know, they had that hedge on for free, that, that, that would have been more than fine. Uh, but instead, no, they, they did nothing. Yeah. So and, uh, <laughs> I saw someone tweeting and, the other day that they had a ton of credit card debt and they had also bought 
a bunch of Dogecoin. Now they're using that to pay off their credit card debt. And I was thinking to myself, you have a ton of credit card debt and you're spending money on Dogecoin? <laughs> well, no. I mean, that actually makes total sense. Understand uh dogecoin investor that's true for that audience it does but that's uh, we're, we're going down a rabbit hole of dogecoin but nonetheless it is an interesting conversation let's keep on rolling some other actual products here that are catching people's eyes and driving a lot of volatility this week you folks love your earnings vol we have all of it for you over there the options insider.com courtesy of our friends over there in orats land options move options move results and options season reports all available for you in your hot little hands hot off the presses Right before showtime, a pretty active week this week as well. Pfizer on Tuesday, CBS on Tuesday, Under Armour on Tuesday, uh, Activision, Blizzard, T-Mobile, Lyft, Match, a whole bunch of different segments just there on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, GM, Hilton, Uber, Marathon, Oil, and PayPal. Thursday, we had Moderna, Viacom, Square, Roku, Peloton. They're having some issues of late. AMC, back to the Mimi names, and of course, Beyond Meat out there as well, and DraftKings. Popping off today, we have some earnings move reports and some move results reports for you. Let's go to Moderna first. They're a popular one these days. They were popping off, looks like yesterday before the bell. They were at 162.84 going into their announcement. They were pricing in 7.6%. No, surprise, surprise. Something in, in the pharma sector actually outperformed from the vol perspective, finally, 8.6%. Uh, to the dark side as of this report. Of course, these are taken as a bit of a snapshot right after the announcement, listeners. So let's go uh, pull them up now and see how that is persisting today at about a 160. So they've gotten actually, <laughs> if you sold premium and held on to it for a day, listeners, they are almost literally unched. They're at about 163. When they went into their announcement, they're at 164 right now. So yeah, if you were patient, that's a time when both ends, the long premium and the short premium could have worked out. If you were diligent on both sides, let's go out to Uber, kind of the poster child for the sharing economy. Obviously, not a lot of people want to share during a time of a pandemic. So a lot of people have been watching them as a bellwether of late. They went into their announcement on the 5th after the bell. They went in at 51.18. They were pricing in 6.2% and they delivered 6%. So they pretty much were in line. They've dropped a little bit. Since then, they're down to about 47. They're at 48 after their announcement last time. So they since, if you've held on to it, you got another couple percent out of it. But nothing dramatic in either direction out here. Let's go out to PayPal. They were also on the 5th. 247 and about a half was where they were going into their announcements. They were pricing in 5.1%. They delivered, get this, listeners, 1.2%. This is more along the lines of what we've been seeing for the better part of the last year is just earnings vol getting annihilated. It seems like they've gotten a little bit of that movement back. They're trading about 254 right now. They're about 250 after their announcement. So they've rallied back about four bucks. So it's another one where if you held on to it, the frame of reference changes and the performance changes. But an initial blush, that was a lot of vol annihilation out there. Let's go out to another one that's kind of hot these days in the wake of all that Archegos fiasco. This is Viacom. They were on the six before the bell. 3910 is where they were going into their announcement. And they priced in 7.3%. This is the name that's kind of been synonymous with Vol of late listeners. <laughs> they delivered, get this, half a percent. <laughs> this is yet another. So they underperformed expectations by 93%, listeners. This is kind of emblematic of what we've seen for the entirety of the pandemic era when it comes to earnings volatility it's a very strange beast even a couple days later that hasn't really changed still about half a percent so (laughs) wow it's another time where uh, vol buyers getting shellacked overall though it's looking a little bit better in aggregate on the season listeners as more numbers are coming in more names are announcing we're seeing a little bit firmer not a lot you're still not making money if you're buying vol But at the very least, you're losing less. A week ago, it was about 55%. So you were getting back 55 cents on the dollar if you were a vol buyer. Now it's up to about 75 cents on the dollar. And this past week, it's close to in line, 97%. So again, these numbers will be revised as more people come in and they analyze them a little bit more. So they'll probably come down a bit. But this past week, not looking too terrible outside of those outliers I just kind of showed you. But still, overall... 75% 75% still not exactly a, a home run for folks out there looking to, uh, to trade some vol. All right, let's keep on rolling now. You folks like to trade some vol. Let's get to some of you on the program. It is time for your volatility voicemail. 
It's time to share your thoughts and opinions with your fellow volatility traders. It's time to check the volatility voicemail. Make your voice heard by dialing 779-669-4VOL. Posting a comment on the optionsinsider.com, sending an email to questions at the optionsinsider.com, or posting your questions to twitter.com slash options or facebook.com slash the options insider all right everybody welcome to the vol voicemail this is where you folks get to ask us questions and once in a while we turn the spotlight back on you like we're doing right now you guys can find our question of the week our fun polls over there at options on twitter is where they usually tend to live this week's question putting your long-term outlook your long-term optimism to the test if you had to buy right now a 10% out of the money call that expires at the end of this year, so December 31st of this year, in one of these four underlyings, which one would it be? Try to give you a broad cross section. VIX, so obviously equity volatility. And then we have uh, the equities themselves, the S&P. I don't care what flavor you want. SPX, buy, going out to the uh, ES for as long as they're around over there at CME. Whatever flavor of S&P 500 you want to buy a call on, we don't judge. And then Bitcoin. And crude oil. So, Mark, kind of a, a broad cross-section. People are already writing in. You should have had this, should have had that. We know. We get it. There's only four choices we're allowed here. <laughs> blame Twitter. Don't blame us. But, Mark, an interesting poll. I will say this, surprisingly contentious as well. If you have a vote in this, have at it. Which one of these do you want to buy a 10% out-of-the-money call that expires at the end of the year on? And then, B, more importantly, what do you think our audience is buying, sir? Uh, I'm going to guess the audience is buying Bitcoin, and I would want to buy WTI uh, while they're still, you know, while they still trade before the CME shuts down. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Let's see what our audience is up to. WTI, not a bad choice. I think your friend, the Rock Lobster, he made a similar choice over there. Certainly had a good move out there. Can it continue? Maybe get north of the 70 handle? Let's see what our audience thinks. And you're right. By a small margin, Bitcoin is still in the lead. 32.2% of you saying Bitcoin. And, you know, 10% Bitcoin can do that in a session. So <laughs> you're almost just, just rolling the dice, even though the probability of that a lot less now that Bitcoin vol is languishing in the high 60s to low 70s. A much lower volatility product than it has been Throughout much of its recent history, we were as well into the triple digits, listeners. If you have interest in all that, check out our crypto rundown program. Spent a lot of time parsing Bitcoin and ETH vol on that show. And then we have uh, SPX coming in, number two, with about 27.1%. Crude oil, number three, all very neck and neck, 24.6%. Bringing up the rear mark, no love for VIX, 16.1%. Sounds like our one by two or one by three friend is uh, is winning the day out here. No, no love for VIX upside by the end of the year. If you haven't played yet, I know a lot of you have. If you haven't made your voices heard, head on over at Options on Twitter. You got, I think, until not even the end of the day today. You got a few hours left. So get on over there. Hopefully, it'll still be running by the time the podcast hits. But if you're listening live, get out there and make your voice heard. The clock is ticking on this one. It sounds like Mark. <laughs> I'm just curious, too, by your comments earlier. I just chatted with the folks from CME and our TWIFO show yesterday. Uh, we talked about, you know, what was going on with that pit and why they're delisting the big, the big S&P going the way of the dodo over there at uh, CME listeners. Now all going electronic, all going E-mini. I remember the days when uh, Globex and E-mini first came around and they had limiters on how many E-minis you could do to protect the big pit. And now, of course, all that going the way of the dodo. I was surprised, Mark, at how many people were surprised that this was happening. And this seems like the writing has been on the wall. CME has been indicating for years that they're not really in the full pit game anymore outside of like euro dollars. They want to move electronics. So that didn't surprise me. I was surprised how many people were surprised by this. Were you surprised by this, sir? And what are your thoughts on this? Effectively an end of an era over there for the S&P at CME, sir. Yeah, I, I was a little surprised. I thought that, that um, you know, certainly grain options still trade a lot, open outcry. Um, so do S and P futures options, although those have been waning a little bit. They still trade some some decent, um, you know, some some pretty decent uh, volume. 
And, you know, the CME just kind of said, you know, we're, we're done. And, uh, you know, I, I, it, what Terry, what Duffy wants to do, Duffy does and CME does it. So I, you know, he's been the head of the CME has been out to kind of get rid of the floor for a very long time. Uh, and you know, the only reason why they're keeping the Euro dollars is because frankly, those things trade so complex that I, I think they want to keep that thing open. There's still a ton of volume that would be a, a loser, but yeah, I'm, I'm a l- kind of sh- frankly shocked that they, they went that route, uh, kind of unilaterally. Um, I could have seen them, you know, delisting some of the, the options, but kind of, but S and P futures options to, to, as well. That 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 surprised me. Yeah, that was a marquee pit for a long time over there. So you're right; it is an end of an era, a sad one. A lot of people I know, even our audience out there, are, are still active in and around these products over there. But of course, it seems like every time a CME has been on this network for years now, talking about options, volume, or trends over there, one of the first stats they always lead with is the percentage of that product, so whatever product it is, what percentage of volume that is going up on Globex, whether it was WTI or corn or S&P, whatever it was. So that was clearly a big area of interest for them and has been for some time. So yeah, interesting that it all came about now. I don't think anyone thought a pandemic would be the final nail in the coffin of the big S&P pit over there at CME. But alas, that era drawing to a close out there, listeners, so pour one out for all the folks who were back in the in the S and P pit. If you ever traded in that product back in the day or have any fond memories, hit us up. Let us know. Let's got a question here from Terry. Terry Proc. He wants to know, Mark. This is, I think, he's referring to that level you've been mentioning many times here on the show. He says, "Do you think we're at the level yet in VIX where things have reset and people will start buying calls again?" Well, Mark, you've talked for a while now about you know waiting for this reset moment out there in products like VIX and Spikes where we get to a low enough level where guys like 50 Cent can come back and all these people who traditionally play in the upside of products like VIX and Spikes will have a reason to come in and not just ratio put spread traders. (laughs) So uh, Terry wants to know, Mark, are we there yet? No, no. I, I do think that we're talking sub 15 for those traders to get interested, um, but we're not far off. And we've and like I said, we've seen a little bit of that. There was that big July call buyer, call spread buyer that was 100% a uh, an option trader, that uh, an option hedger uh, using the VIX. But um, you know, we're not at that level where people are all over it yet. Not quite there, as evidenced by a size put spreads. You're right. That July call spread does kind of stand out. It's kind of an outlier. It's a bit of a throwback to some more old school paper. That's why we've been watching it so keenly. And it still is the size position out there in VIX right now. So from a size position perspective, yeah, people are have that one trade on. But outside of that, not quite there yet, Terry. Let's, let's end it up with some love here from Mac. Mac says, you guys are the best. Well, no, Mac, you're the best. Uh, he goes on to write, I, I wish more people were out there talking about volatility and its impact on the markets. This is really the secret sauce of trading, but everyone is obsessed with Doge and Tesla and everything else. Keep fighting the good fight. Well, thank you very much, Mac, and everyone who takes the time to write in with your questions and comments and your kind words and, of course, rate and review us. Obviously, there's a lot of vol to be discussed in products like Tesla, too. They're not exactly divorced from the volatility story. But I hear what you're saying. You know, vol, we launched this show a long time ago, and I'm still surprised there aren't more people out there talking about volatility. We're happy to be the ones to do it, but it's just, it is kind of fascinating. So, uh, Mark, what do you think about a little bit of love from Mac? He wishes more people were out there talking about vol, sir. I agree. I wish there were more people out there talking about vol. Uh, they're few and far between, and a lot of the people that talk about them don't know what they're talking about. But, um, namely the two people on the show. No, I kid. But um, yeah, no, I, I, I agree. The, the vol is really important and a lot of people don't seem to want to pay attention to it. We're happy to fill that void for you there. Who was that? Uh, Mac, I'm sorry, Mac. We're happy to fill that void for you, Mac. As we keep on going into the final segment, it is now time to step bravely into the void. It is time for the crystal ball. It's time to peer into the future and reveal what the volatility gods hold in store. It's time to look into 
the Crystal Ball. All right, everybody. Welcome to the Crystal Ball. This is the portion of the show where we attempt to wrestle with what the Vol gods have in store for us for the coming week. And as I said at the top of the show, it has been this dance now between the expected bit of erosion we're seeing out there in the vol market versus these little shocks that seemingly crop up every week. And how aggressive will they be? How long-lived will they be? These are all the questions we have to analyze when we're doing this segment. And last week, I was feeling a little bit less vol on the tape for this week. I was at a 17 double, a 1755. And coming into showtime, that's actually not looking too bad. We got about a 1735 in the VIX cash. I'm about two tenths of a point away there. And Spikes is at about a 1795. So I'm about four tenths of a point. Just tick the 18. So 0.45 away on Spikes. So I'm not within our tenth of a point margin of victory, but pretty darn close. Uh, Mr. Meatball was feeling a little bit of yelling. He thought yelling would persist throughout the course of the entire week because we did get right around his prediction earlier in the week. He was at a 20 even. And then, of course, as we said again earlier in the show, these vol spikes, pun intended, tend to have a very short shelf life. And uh, once again, it has played out kind of the way I thought it would. And Mr. Meatball kind of left holding the 20 strike bag as we're about two handles and change away on spikes and more than that on VIX cash. So that means I get to go first. Uh, let's see. I will blaze a trail for this. I'm, I'm not afraid to dive into that void, listeners. Again, the question that weighs upon me, what will shock the system this week and how long will it last versus the inexorable gravitational pull to the downside there in VIX land? I'm going to say we're going to see a little bit more. Now, now that I see how aggressively it's come back out again today, it does seem like it seemed for a while that maybe folks were abandoning that trade, but now it seems like they're, they're back on the train with some gusto. I'm going to say we're going to sell off a bit, going to see another bit of retracement throughout the course of early, mid next week. And this time on the show next week, I'm going to say we're going to be about a third of a point lower, 17 and a quarter. Will I be crazy surprised if we're in a 16 handle? No, I will not. I won't look askance at that at all. But uh, just it passed his prologue. I got a feeling that's where we're hanging out. All right, Mr. Meatball, out on a limb last week with a very bold, a very daring 20-handle prediction. Unfortunately, it did not come to pass for you, sir. What are you feeling for this time next week? I was I was looking pretty good earlier in the week. Um, You're looking just, good on like uh, you know, Tuesday. Wait all the way Ye- to Friday. Yellen was your friend. You should have declared victory on Tuesday and been done with it, sir. I know, I know. Uh, she's killing me. Um, but... We, you know, but basically I was, I was hedging my, my actual positions. So at least I would feel good about something if ball really did blow up. So, you know, even though I lost the, the, the competition, I, I kind of won. Um, I, and Mark, you guessed what? 16, 17 and a quarter, 17 and a quarter. All right. I'm going to fade you the other way this time. I'm going to go. 1616. Oh, interesting. Normally I say that's a good year, but uh, I can't off the top of my head recall what happened of note in 1616. Hit me up if you're an expert on 16. So there you go. There's your market listeners. 1616 to the darks. I had a feeling you'd have a 16 handle this week, Mark. Last week being a bit of an aberration. I would not be angry at all if your prognostication comes to pass. 17 and a quarter for me here, listeners. What are you feeling for this time next week? How much juice will come out versus. How much of the pop will still be around on the show this time next week? Oh, we got a listener in the chat, Mr. Unlimited, chiming in. He's at where you are, Mark, almost exactly. He's kind of carping you. 1619. (laughs) So we got two votes for in the 16 teens next week. Interesting. More of you hit us up. Let us know what you're thinking here for volatility next week. Unfortunately, that music means we have to get on out of here for this week on volatility views but before we go let's go back around the horn let's start with the greasiest of meatballs sir if folks want to debate lower levels of vol with you maybe they want to talk about dogecoin (laughs) or all the other fun stuff you have cooking over there in the land of the pit Uh, where should they go what should they do yeah go to optionpit.com and uh, make sure you subscribe and you'll get all my juicy emails with all kinds of amazing information about 
what could happen with volatility and you know how I'm trying trading it and trying to make money. Those emails are indeed very juicy. I can attest to that myself. Sign up for them over there at optionpit.com. And you know where to go to learn more about everything with execution services and trading technology. It's only one place. It's matrixexecutions.com. Also give them a follow on the old Twitters as well, listener. Just Matrix EX Tech for all their updates in between episodes of this show and of course you know where to go to find out more about all things spikes myaxoptions.com slash spikes that gives you the data that's where i'm getting all these quotes from spikes from right over there as well as of course historical data settlement press releases all the new updates to all things spikes even a link to a cool show called volatility views what more could you ask for of course while you're clicking around myax uh, check out the shift search they were talking about on the show not too long ago it's myax M-I-A-X dot shift search, S-H-I-F-T search dot com. It's a great free utility. If you want to check out volatility and unusual activity, all sorts of cool stuff, uh, check it out. It's pretty cool. I had a call with those guys earlier this week. They're planning some big stuff. So stay tuned to that one as well. And on behalf of everybody over there in Myax and in Matrix and in the Land of the Pit and indeed myself, I want to thank all of you out there for downloading, streaming, subscribing, for listening live for sending in your questions, for voting in our polls, for everything that you do throughout the entirety of our week. Unfortunately, that concludes our broadcast week here on the Options Insider Radio Network. So rest up, have a great weekend, stay sane, stay safe. We'll be back again on Monday, kick it off again with the Option Block all the way through to Friday (laughs) at another episode of Volatility Views. Volatility Views is brought to you by Myax, one of the fastest, most efficient trading platforms in the world. Myax is proud to bring you Spikes Volatility products. Spikes options and futures are traded on the Spikes Volatility Index, Spike, offering pinpoint accuracy, radically faster dissemination, and a highly transparent settlement auction, all for ultra-low exchange fees. It's volatility reimagined. Learn more about spikes at myaxoptions.com slash spikes. Options and futures involve risk and are not suitable for all investors. The statements made are provided for informational purposes only and should not be relied on for financial or legal advice. Volatility Views is also brought to you by Matrix Executions, LLC, an agency broker-dealer focused on best execution in trading workflow automation. A technology-driven firm, Matrix is led by trading pioneers with decades of experience designing and building best-in-class solutions for options markets. Matrix connects to all domestic exchange venues and multiple international exchanges and serves both institutional and individual clients. For more information on Matrix Executions, LLC, please visit MatrixExecutions.com. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com.